Hello and welcome to the COVID podcast. This is the podcast where we talk anything and everything COVID-19 as well as debunk myths about the pandemic. Now today we are talking vaccine hesitancy and we are joined by a researcher at the survey warehouse, Mr. Christy Quelder. Um, Christy, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure. Very well. Now, we are talking vaccine hesitancy today. Um, you wrote an article about that, and the word itself, vaccine hesitancy, is quite self-explanatory. But maybe just in layman terms, can you perhaps just explain to us what vaccine hesitancy is? Yeah, um, vaccine hesitancy uh, actually has a formal definition that's been issued by the WHO, uh, and it refers to a delay in acceptance or even the refusal of a vaccination despite the availability of the vaccination services. So somebody chooses either not to immediately go for vaccinations or refuse to go for vaccinations at all. Um, uh, it is a, a phenomenon that has been around for a long, long time, perhaps as, as, as uh, far back as, as the history of vaccines. So vaccine hesitancy is generally a very complex issue to understand um, it's very context specific. Uh, it varies across time, place, and types of vaccines. Um, and uh, as a result, there's a great many things that causes this phenomenon. Uh, and it's just become relevant again in the context of the COVID-19 vaccine, but it's been around for, for a long time. Now, do you think um, Namibia has experienced some form of vaccine hesitancy in regards to the COVID-19 pandemic? Oh, yes, very, very uh, definitely so. Uh, one can see that the uptake of uh, the vaccine, as they, they call it, has been very, very slow. I think uh, we've got around 20,000 people that's fully vaccinated. Uh, other countries in the world has got already close to 50%. Um, and again, as I said, it's not a, a problem unique to Namibia either. Uh, there seems to be a whole lot of uh, vaccine hesitancy all over the world. Uh, which prevents people from getting vaccinated. Um, just a little heads up to the listeners. I am talking to um, Christy via Zoom. So in case you hear a little bit of um, scratch audio, uh, it's because we are speaking via Zoom. But anyway, Christy, in your article, um, you write that according to um, a recent survey that more than half of the Namibia's population is unlikely to get vaccinated. Uh, do you think that this is perhaps one of the reasons there is some form of um, vaccine hesitancy because even before the vaccines came out, um, when the health minister and everyone else and all the officials were talking to us about it, they did mention that we are trying to reach a form of herd immunity um, and by virtue of that, not everyone is going to get vaccinated. So surely people thought that I might be in the numbers that aren't going to get vaccinated and that's probably the reason why there's some sort of hesitancy. Do you, do you agree with that statement? Well, um, the fact that more than half of the population said that they're unlikely to get vaccinated is, is what we refer to as the, the, the indicator for vaccination hesitancy. If more than 50% of the population is hesitant about vaccines, then that means we would probably not achieve herd immunity uh, anytime soon. Um, you, okay, you, you did mention features of vaccine hesitancy because I'm just trying to figure out what the causes actually are of vaccine um, hesitancy. In, in your article, I, I saw you mention, or I read that you mentioned a few features. Can you perhaps just in detail um, let us know what the features of vaccine, the features of vaccine hesitancy in Namibia are? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it's, it's uh, as I said, it's very compli uh, complex. It's very difficult to understand and it's very context oriented. Uh, what we've seen in our survey is, for example, that, that some regions in the country have higher levels of vaccine hesitancy than others. Um, in regions where, where respondents have a uh, report higher likelihood of getting vaccinated, so less uh, vaccine hesitancy, includes Kavanga East, Zambesi, Omusati, Kunene, Oshana, uh, Oshana Kavanga West, Karas, and not just on Chupa. Uh, and with the exception of Oshana, of course, these are all predominantly rural uh, regions, or the uh, regions in which the population live in rural areas predominantly. So that's the one feature. We know, uh, at least from this, that urban areas seems to have higher uh, levels of vaccine hesitancy. The second trend is that we see vaccine hesitancy 
uh, is higher among women uh, rather than among men, which for some people may be quite interesting. Um, we don't have an exact reason why this may be the case, but uh, there's been a lot of misinformation around the impact of vaccines on women, and in particularly uh, fertility, which seems to uh, uh, target younger women uh, and trying to keep them not to get vaccinated. People are scared that they may not be able to build children. Uh, right. That, of course, is not true, but it may have an impact. Um, we see that 55% of women indicated that they're unlikely to get vaccinated and 47% of men said the same. So that gap, gender gap is quite significant. Um, and then, uh, you know, again, if we look at, it, at the gender gap on a regional level, we see that this gender gap for vaccine hesitancy uh, is largest in Zambesi, Karas and Kavango East. Here, men are 20% more likely to get vaccinated than women. So, um, uh, as I said, it's context bound. So we need to understand why this is the case. Uh, uh, okay. Our survey don't go that far. We we we'll probably need an, a follow up to be able to tease out all this uh, once we've established, you know, how big this is. Um, another aspect where we see vaccine hesitancy is that it's highest amongst younger uh, Namibians, so people aged 18 to 35 years. And then the very older respondents, those older than 65 years. Now, that seems to be also borne out by research elsewhere, that it's the very young and the very old that often respond badly to public health messages. Right. Um, right. And then, as I said... Now, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, 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 for, sorry for cutting you there, Christy. Um, just on, on the, the aspect of... Sorry. sorry for cutting you there. Just on the aspect of young people. Um, I realize that... Uh, Obviously, um, the majority of Namibians that are on social media um, are predominantly young. Um, and obviously, there's a barrage of fake news and I guess just information in general about um, the coronavirus, about uh, vaccines that can be overwhelming. Do you think perhaps that these are possible reasons that there is some form of vaccine hesitancy? Because there's so much information to 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 intake that it's it's it somewhat leads to a confusion of some sort um because you don't know what to believe i mean some sources are saying that the vaccine is 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 um i guess you know the right thing to do and some sources are saying that it's it's dangerous to your health so do you think that the overwhelmness of information can be a, a key factor in young people being hesitant to get vaccinated well we know that young people are, of course, more likely to use social media platforms or internet sources of news, um, which means by definition that they will be more exposed to, um, to fake news uh, simply because of the platforms they use. Um, right. Those older than 65 years may, for a different reason, feel... Uh, hesitant to get vaccinated. It may be that, that they argue that they're too old already, they're going to die soon, or they're ill anyway, or they don't go anywhere. So they might have very different reasons from the younger uh, folks in terms of their hesitancy. I think there may be an element of younger people responding to disinformation around the vaccine, but I also think it may have to do with a general attitude towards life. Uh, where younger people may not take these messages as seriously. They think they're young, they're strong, they're healthy. Uh, if something happens to them, they may be able to survive. Um, so I think, you know, in that sense, the, there may be more than one reason. Not everybody will be motivated by the same reason. But there's definitely a difference in the reasons for 18 to 55 years old of 18 yeah. to 34, uh, 35 year olds. And the older ones, I don't think they have the same reasons for not wanting to get vaccinated. But here too, I mean, I think there's more room uh, to, to sort of focus on exactly why this is the case. But I think social media might have something to do with it, the types of information that is available. And then younger people just feeling sort of more bullish about life uh, and their chances, uh, you know, having a stronger, almost like an optimism bias uh, compared to older people. Of course. Now, and I, we, sorry, we... Uh, just, a, uh, just a, uh, an add to this. I think we need to understand that 
thus far, the messages that have gone out about vaccinations has not been aimed at any specific age group, right? So there's not been a lot done to um, shape the messages for these age cohorts uh, and the responses. I think that might also be a problem, the fact that younger and older people feel uh, they get messages that don't apply to them. Now, we, we, we also see that um, in, in more of the Western countries, uh, in more of the developed countries, that um, they are, you know, getting back to, I think, a, a form of um, a semblance of normality with them going to restaurants without any masks. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a football tournament happening where stadiums are almost full to capacity now, no masks in sight, no social distancing in sight, but people are vaccinated nonetheless. Um, do you think that the form of or the rate and the frequency of vaccine hesitancy in Namibia will sort of keep us um, back um, in terms of just our progress to, or our, in, in terms of making progress to, to getting back to some semblance of normality? Do you think that it will take us a while if we continue with the frequency of vaccine hesitancy that we have? Yes, very much so. I think those instances that you mentioned, the football, uh, <clears throat> getting to restaurants and so forth, <clears throat> and I know also from uh, just somebody told me the other day about a rock concert, uh, what they don't tell you is that all those things require you to be vaccinated before you get entrance. Without vaccinations, you're not getting into anything. Um, be it a restaurant, having your hair cut at a barber in Germany, it's, it's impossible. So they can only do what they do because people are vaccinated. And that is the point that I think everybody is trying to dodge, that there will be a time when you won't be able to do anything without showing your vaccination card. It's as simple as that. And, and those societies now open up, and they open up at a, a rapid rate because they have uh, less uh, vaccine hesitancy. I think one thing that may change our reluctance to get vaccinated and sadly so, is just the brutal force of this third wave. All of a sudden, you know, numbers are becoming names. Everybody's losing somebody. Everybody's having somebody that's really sick. Maybe that will inspire people more to get vaccinated. Um, but the point is, yeah, vaccination is going to be the golden thread for any form of economic recovery. It's as simple as that. There's no other explanation for it. So well, I think in... in in that sense, you know, if you look at what happens overseas, uh, and, and if we don't um, uh, uh, get vaccinated, that's not going to come here anytime soon. Get it? Definitely. I definitely agree with you. Well, um, we seem to be running out of time. We'll have to close the show, sh uh, the show soon. Um, any final thoughts, Christy, on um, vaccine hesitancy or comments, perhaps? Yes, I think one of the issues that, that we've said all along is that there's not a lot of trust in the vaccine. A lot of people are hesitant to get vaccinated because they either deem the vaccine to be unsafe or uh, they think that it may be some kind of grand experiment. Um, and again, this is the type of misinformation that drives vaccine hesitancy and hence keeps our vaccination rates low. Um, I think our communications around vaccines need to address these issues because uh, here, too, not everybody has the same reasons, as I said. Um, I think we're in, in one part, we, we're suffering from a lack of trust, trust in government to make sure that uh, convince people that the vaccines are safe, uh, trust in the vaccines themselves and trust in those who are producing the vaccines. So I think until we address these issues, we're going to have a really hard time achieving that um, status of herd immunity that we also desire. Of course, no, I agree with you 100%. Um, well, there you have it. We have run out of time. Thank you so much for joining us, Christy. Really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much. It's always an honor to be here. Um, thank you, listeners, for joining us as well. Um, this is all we have for the COVID podcast today. Join us again next week, same time, same place, as we talk anything and everything COVID-19, as well as debunk myths related to the pandemic. My name is John Colin Namene. Until next time, cheers. Cheers.